Hey everybody, it's Dave from Let's Make a Game Together. Thanks for checking out this video. It's been a little bit since we've done the last episode, but that's okay. We're going to jump into this episode because we've got some pretty juicy, sweet things to talk about that I'm pretty excited about. How have you guys been? <laughs> I've been pretty good. Looking forward to the Christmas break and having some time off with the family. So before we get started, I want to note that I've upgraded our project to the latest version of Unity, which had some pretty dramatic changes, um, but it, it seemed to um, move over pretty fine. First of all, I just want to say thanks to all my supporters on Patreon. You guys are what keep this channel alive, and thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And thank you especially to my Fedora supporters. You guys are legends. So what I want to talk about in this um, lesson is... I first want to do a bit of a project tidy up. You'll see that we've got an ETC folder here. I don't know why that's there. We'll just delete that. And what I want to start actually doing is we've talked about a few things in this course. So last episode, we dealt with character selection, but we've done things like camera. We've dealt with death, um, like player death, a basic enemy. We, we've adjusted the enemy a little bit, but it's still completely broken. <laughs> but... Um, it, it was good enough to prototype with. Done some high score systems, collectibles, saving and loading, um, parallax scrolling, clouds, and we even talked about doors. So, uh, what I want to talk about in this episode is actually building a level, building our first level. And we want to do that by using the tile map um, system inside of Unity, which is actually really, really awesome. So, we're going to mix things up a little bit and we're going to create a new scene. So, create new scene and I'm going to call this level zero zero one and we can just open that cool and first of all we are left with this blank and boring canvas so let's first of all bring our player in and I think I want to actually bring the camera out a little bit so I'm going to adjust the size to be maybe eight, it looks like a good number. For now, going to change the color, because everyone knows I hate that color. Cool, got a bit of a dark gloomy color here, but that's okay. I might make it a bit, yeah, I like that. So when we press play, the game totally screws up, and I think I know why. If we go to our scripts and we go to our player, play health if you remember when we set uh, we set this basically this die method that just says whenever we're underneath negative seven we're just going to reload this level so we just need to remove that comment that out we don't need to die at this stage press play sweet character falls forever that's exactly what we want and there's a few things that i want to change about this player because we're no longer prototyping, well, hopefully, and we're just going to be tidying it up a little bit. So if we go to player, we've got play to prototype, player, and I want to actually um, take off a few things on this player. So first thing, I don't want the player score, so we can remove that. So if we press play now, this variable, this error shouldn't show up. Cool, no errors. And our player health doesn't actually need to be there either. So we've just got our player move prototype, which needs to be worked over. But for testing purposes, we're just going to leave it as is. And let's just go over to our prefabs. Drag our prefab in and let's press play. Cool, so our player moves around. So cool, our player is working in this situation. Although it's not jumping. So let's just check. Is grounded. Uh, distance to bottom. 1.3 it seems to be now. Cool. All right, so distance to bottom needs to be 1.3. Fantastic. And we can get rid of this box. Oops. Get rid of this box. Okay, so now we have a blank level. And what we want to do is actually use the new tile map system. So what we'll be do doing is 
implementing the new tile map system inside of Unity. And to do that, we need um, tiles that we can use that we can tile, <laughs> tile map tiles. Um, and if you don't know what they are, they're basically like sprites that can kind of repeat and they can, they're kind of what you can use to make a simple level. And if you don't have a tile map or if you don't want to create one, you just go to that website, um, opengameart.org, and you can find, type in tile map, and this one looks pretty good. See this one, you can see, and um, but this one has all the tiles that you would need, and it says 32 by 32. So it's 32 pixels by 32 pixels each tile map. But myself, I've created some tile maps that we that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to import install import them now. So I'm just going to drag my tile map in, and we can see it here. And I'm just going to drag that into sprites. Cool. So I'm going to go over to it and I know that I've created this tile map with a 16 by 16 um, like tile setting. So 16 pixels by 16 pixels is each tile. So I'm just going to change the pixels per unit to 16. I'm going to change this uh, filter mode to point, apply. No compression, apply. Move over to Sprite Editor. We can change this to multiple and press apply and apply again. Obviously, apply, apply, apply. <laughs> Said that like a thousand times. And we go to go to slice grid by cell size, and it's saying, well, it's 64 by 64. Well, I actually want 16 by 16 slice. Cool. So now we can see that we've got all these perfectly sliced in the right spots. And I, and we knew this because we, I knew that I created these with a 16 by 16 pixels. And you can see they're really simple. They're, they're pretty crappy actually, to be honest. Um, but I'm just gonna press apply and quit. So the first thing we wanna do is go to window, 2D, tile palette. And this is what we'll be dealing with in this lesson. So if we just dock this, we can dock it maybe in the scene or maybe in the game view over here, but I'm going to move this. Over here. Zoom out, we can see our camera and everything. So then what we can do is we can create new palette and I'm just going to call this level 001 ground. I'm going to create. It's asking us where to create it. And I'm just going to put that inside assets. And I'm going to create a new folder called tile map. Select that. Awesome. And then we can just click and we can just drag this in. And it's asking, well, it's asking um, to save these as well. And I'm going to create a new folder called tiles. And I'm going to create a new folder in that called level 001, select folder. And now it's generating all the tiles, fantastic. And now we can literally click on these, and let's just click this one. And if we create a new 2D object tile map, you can see this grid pops up. And then we can s seriously just paint in some tiles. How cool is that? Now we've got this ground there. The ground looks pretty crappy. In fact, it annoys me that there's no shadow underneath this. So I'm just gonna quickly fix it up. Awesome, so now we have the sweet uh, shadow. <laughs> cool, sorry, that was just frustrating me. So if we go back over to our tile palette um, and we can just muck around and make a simple level. So I'm just gonna do that now. Okay, fantastic. So we have this basic level now, or we have a basic um, s starting area. And let's press play and see what happens. And I bet you can guess, he falls straight through um, the ground. So what are we gonna do? Well, we need to go to our tile map. Let's rename it ground tile map. Let's 
add a component called Tile Map Collider 2D. Bam. Okay, let's press play and let's see what happens. Awesome. So now our character can move left and right and we can easily create new bits of level really, really easily. How cool is that? And to erase, obviously, you just use the erase. Sweet. Now this may be all fun and good, but right now our game sucks pretty bad. For one, um, we don't have any like depth in the game. Like you know, in the last in the, in the episodes beforehand, we had um, you know certain situations where we would have parallax effects in. Well, we can do something extra cool with tile maps. So I have this other file here that I've created. Um, basically inside of Photoshop that just has on the top layer of these 16 by 16 squares has some grass and on the bottom part of these 16 by 16 squares it has some you know shoots of grass and that looks pretty sweet right so I've just and I use this to kind of line it up and see what it would look like and I've just turned that off and I've just saved it as a PNG and just saved it into the project once again, if you don't have the artwork, feel free to go to opengameart.org or you can just make it in paint. It's pretty simple. Cool. So now that the details are imported, we'll go through the same um, system, change it to point, make it 16, apply, make it multiple, apply. We're going to do sprite editor. We're going to slice by cell size. 16, 16, slice, awesome. Apply that, press OK. And then we can just drag this into here. And it's asking us for a place to save the tiles. And we're going to dump them into level 001. Sweet. Awesome, so that looks pretty good. Um, but what we want to do is we want to go to the grid and we want to create a new tile map and this tile map we want to be the foreground so we're going to say foreground tile map and now what we want to do is we want to actually make some sorting layers so you'll see here our ground tile map is on the sorting layer if you go over the tile map renderer here you'll see it's on the sorting layer of default and so is our tile map renderer on the sorting layer of default well, we could just, you know, change the order in layer to one or two, but because we're setting up an actual level, we can put things in the foreground and the background. But right now we don't need a background, we just need a foreground. So we can go to default, add sorting layer, add a layer. I'm going to call this foreground. And I'm going to add another one called background. I'm going to drag the background on top of the default. Cool, let's get to the foreground and we can change it to foreground. And then all we need to do is when we go over to our tile map, we can see we've got an active tile map. We can just change that to foreground tile map and voila. We can mix things up a little bit. see what that looks like oh yeah that looks pretty cool and we can just make our game look all the more good looking so if we press play now we'll see that our player actually moves behind the grass which is pretty cool Okay, so the only thing to talk about with the collider at this stage is you'll notice on um, the tile map, sorry, at this stage is you'll notice that sometimes our player gets a little, like gets stuck, like just right here. I'm holding the left button and he's stuck. So what's going on here? So let's look at what's going on. So right now, my guess is, is the player is colliding just with some like tiny tiny float error with this little with the collider here because you notice that each one of these has their own separate collider not only is this inefficient 
but we don't need to actually do this. This is a good way to set things up at the start, but we don't actually need to do this. So what we can do is we go to our ground um, time up and we can actually add a component called Composite Collider 2D. And then we can change our rigid body to static because it's not going to be moving, but it just adds it by default. And then on our tile map um, 2D Collider 2D, we can just click Use by Composite. And then you'll see it's drawn this neat little line around everything, which is really, really sick. Like it's just got one big collider. So if we press play, no errors. And our player is jumping around and having a good time. The only thing that is not working well is this stupid, annoying part of the player. But don't worry, we'll be changing that in a future episode. And what's really cool about this Composite Collider 2D is that it actually uh, works in... Um, we can set the generation types to synch uh, synchronous. So what that means... What, what, what does that mean, Dave? Well, let's press play. Let's pause the game. And let's take our eraser tool and let's erase, uh, let's change it to ground. Let's erase some of the ground. Let's unpause it. Now you'll see that we've got our collider along the top there. Let's press unpause. And then now <laughs> the collider has updated. How cool is that? It's a pretty sweet system. So now we have a workable system to build out our levels really quickly and really easily and make them look really awesome in a short amount of time. Thanks heaps for watching this video and if you want any extra goodies make sure you check out the Patreon for some sweet extra stuff that you can get or if you want the project files for this um, then check out the Patreon. Until next time keep practicing your indie game skills and you will be a master in no time. Sweet. See you guys.